These three habits helped me make over a million dollars selling my music online and even get two Grammy nominations by the time I was 21. In this video, we're going to dive into those three habits. And if you stick around to the end, I'm going to give you a guide on how you can go about building new habits so you can be the best version of yourself. Habit number one, obsessive work ethic. A lot of times I feel like people really underestimate how much work it really takes to be successful at something. In my experience, it's taken almost an unhealthy work ethic to get where I have got today. And I know a lot of people don't want to hear that but sometimes you have to make sacrifices if you really want to win. If I even think back to when I was a teenager, I was going nights on end with no sleep, which don't recommend. There was definitely periods of time where that was really affecting my health and that was not good. I was pulling all-nighters, sometimes staying up for two nights in a row, just working on music, getting better, learning, and just working on my craft. So since I was like 15 years old, I've been all in on this and I've been working my ass off at it. And even flash forward to recent days, I'm typically working anywhere from 10 to 12 hours a day on my business with one day off a week just to hang out with my fiance. And it's definitely not easy and there's not a lot of time for other stuff. So you have to make sacrifices. Like I really don't hang out with my friends that often. I typically don't have much time to watch TV, play video games or any of that stuff. I don't think I've played video games since I was in like freshman year of high school. And another part of that work ethic is pushing forward regardless of how I feel. So there's some days where I'm working and I really just don't feel like doing it. Whether it's filming a YouTube video, making loops, working on the business side of things. There's days where I just want to drop all of it, quit music and not do anything. But a big reason I've got to where I am today is because I just kept going. So even if I didn't want to make music, I would force it out of myself and still get those reps in because I was building a characteristic in myself that I would just keep going no matter what my circumstances or my feelings about my circumstances were at the time. And also just a little mini habit inside of that kind of obsessive thing that I've got going on is I make sure that my phone is always in focus mode. If you're on iPhone, you can go into your settings and set focus mode so you can set one for work, school, sleep, whatever you have going on. And you can choose specific people who can notify you and all your other notifications get blocked. You can choose specific apps that can notify you, stuff like that. So I try my best to eliminate all of the notifications that I have coming in so that I'm not getting distracted while I'm working. And then another thing that I do is I put my phone on black and white because it looks so ugly to look through social media when everything is black and white. So it makes it a lot less enjoyable to do it. And the thought process behind that is just hoping that I can get my screen time down and spend more time working and doing things that I care about instead of just mindlessly scrolling. And the first week that I actually did this, I think my screen time went down by like 30% from the week before without changing anything else. A lot of people have told me that's super weird, but it's worked for me. Habit number two, planning my day. Planning my day has been a staple of my success so far. I remember before I was planning out my days and my to-do lists, there was a ton of days that I would wake up and have no idea what I should be doing to really go forwards and build towards my long-term goals. I would just wake up, cook up whatever beat I felt like making, do whatever I felt like doing. And it was super hard to have vision of where I was going. I felt lost all the time. And as soon as I took it seriously and I started planning exactly what I need to be doing every day, my results started to go up super quick. And I definitely don't think that was a coincidence at all. Other than working hard and staying consistent, which are obvious things that you need to succeed, planning my day has been a staple to my success. And the way that I plan my days is a little bit more complicated than I used to do. So let me run through that. The first thing I do is I write down every single one of my weekly goals. So for an example, my goal might be to make 20 loops, post one YouTube video, film a new YouTube video, work on a new sound kit for my website Sonics, and maybe film some new ads for my old kit, Elements of Soul. Once I've got all those goals written down, what I do next is I go into my calendar and I actually break those down and decide big picture what I'm gonna work on each day. So let's say my goal is to make 20 loops and I have six work days in the week. I know that on average, I've gotta get more than three loops done every single day if I wanna make that happen. And I very well could just make three loops a day and then do my other stuff after that. But what I found works better for me is is I'll take one day and all I'll do is make loops. So instead of making three that day, I might be able to make eight complete finished loops that day. And then I'm already almost halfway there on that goal. And then the next day after that, I might only focus on making YouTube videos. And then I can get that whole part of my week done on day two. Day three, I'm gonna work on my Sonic stuff. And then the remaining days, I'm just making music and taking care of things that came up that I wasn't expecting during the week. So once I've planned out big picture what each day is gonna have in store, the night before each day, I go in and plan every single task that I'm gonna be doing that day. And to do all this, I use the producer playbook, which is a crazy productivity template that we made specifically to make music producers more productive and help them crush 
squash their goals. So if you're interested in using the exact template that I use to plan my days, just click the link in the description down below. Now, whenever I'm planning my tasks for the day, I typically have a habit of just completely overloading how much stuff I'm gonna do each day. I try to jam pack it with as many things as humanly possible and even more after that. But I kind of think of it like that saying, shoot for the stars, aim for the moon, because if I'm aiming to get 20 loops done that day and then I only get 12 done, yes, I might've failed to my goal and my standard that I wanted to live up to, but I might've made five more loops than I would have if my goal was just to make seven loops that day. And when you compound that increase in your workload for years and a bunch of time, the difference can be super, super substantial. I mean, even if you take two extra loops or two extra beats every single day, that's more than 700 more beats over the course of a year. So imagine working like that for multiple years, even 10 years, and you're just miles ahead of where you would have been if you were limiting yourself on how productive you could be. But real quick, before we get into the next habit, I kind of want to just run through what a typical day would look like in my life right now. So typically I wake up at around 5.30 in the morning. And the first thing I do after checking my phone and saying good morning to my fiance is work. I don't have any crazy morning routine where I'm journaling or doing a bunch of this stuff. I just get right to work because I feel like my energy is the highest right when I wake up and I have the most energy to get the most important parts of my day done. So typically what I like to do is go out to a coffee shop every single morning and I'll work there from around 6, 6.30 a.m. to around 10.30 or 11 a.m. So I'm there for a good four to five hours. And in this time, I'm doing my highest priority tasks for the day. So if my main goal is to make a bunch of music that day, that whole time I'm working at the coffee shop or at home, I'm getting as much done as I possibly can. Because then even when noon comes, I've already done more than a lot of people have done. And if my whole day goes to shit and some unexpected stuff comes up or I'm just not feeling it, I've at least got a good chunk of work done in the morning. Anyways, once I finish that work, I typically go home, eat some lunch, and then I'll do the rest of my work in the afternoon till about 5 p.m. And then after that, I eat dinner, go to the gym, make sure to plan my day for the next day. And then I end up going to bed at around 9.30 to 10 p.m. Habit number three evolving. All aspects of the world are always changing and the music production scene is no different. But one thing that's brought me to where I am today is I've been able to adapt and evolve with the world and grow with it instead of trying to grow against it and stay in the past. If I would have just kept doing exactly what was working for me back in 2020 and 2021, I never would have grown into doing what I'm able to do today. And since the market has actually dipped a bit, I would definitely be making a lot less money than I was back in 2021. But one of the reasons I've been able to maintain my success is because I was always fighting to try to stay at my level of success that I was at in around 2021. And I was always trying to figure out new ways to make money, new ways to grow my personal brand and make more money, learning more about the business side of things and doing everything that I possibly could to make sure that I was growing and actually moving forward instead of just staying stagnant because the world's always moving. And if you're not moving with it, you're just gonna get left behind. However, that doesn't mean that you should just quit something as soon as it's not working and try to change to something else. You need to make sure that you're not giving up just because something is hard, but sometimes when it just doesn't make any sense to be doing anymore, when you learn some new stuff or you see a better opportunity that's too good to not look that direction. Sometimes you've got to know when you need to cut ties with your old stuff and go all in on the new thing. And I kind of touched on this before, but make sure that you keep learning new skills. This could be anything. If you are super good at music, you know how to play the keys, you can make super great melodies, super great beats, but your business skills are kind of lacking. Maybe spend the next few months really trying to develop that side of your brain and learning a bunch of stuff about the business. So you're not just a one trick pony and you can have a better chance at having longevity in this game. I've seen a lot of people, as soon as things aren't easy for them, they kind of fall off and they keep doing the same exact things that they were doing before. And I bet a lot of them would have been better off if they had more skills to fall back on and kind of help them through tougher times. And if you've got the flip side of that and you've got a ton of great business ideas, but your music is just really not there, you really need to go in and hone in on that. Because if you can make money with just decent music, imagine how much more money you can make with amazing standout music. Now, I'm sure you know a lot of habits that you should be doing or you want to be doing to get the results that you want. But the hard part is actually building those things you do and those actions into real habits that you practice consistently. Sometimes it can be super overwhelming when you have a ton of new habits that you want to do and you try to kind of attack them all at once and do 
everything all at once. And then a few days later or a week later, you end up getting burnt out and just going back to the same thing as you were doing before, or maybe even falling off worse than you were before. So here's what I would do if I wanted to build some new habits. First thing, you need to pick one habit. Make it the highest priority one for you. Just for an example that I think applies to a lot of music producers, let's take planning your day. Once you've got the habit that you want to start doing, make sure to add that into your daily routine. To start our habit of planning our days, we could start super simple and just start planning it in your notes app the night before you go to sleep. And once you become comfortable with doing that and it becomes easy and kind of second nature for you, start getting more in depth with it. Make sure your daily to-do list is building towards your weekly goals, which are building towards your monthly goals. And then those goals are building towards your long-term vision. Start small and build from there and make sure that you keep yourself accountable. I like using the habit tracker inside the producer playbook so I can actually see how often I'm hitting each one of those habits that I want to be building every single day. It's easy to take one day off in the beginning of building a new habit, but the start is the most crucial part. You need to break your old patterns and initially you need to make sure that you're not taking one day off or giving yourself any wiggle room. It's supposed to be hard if it's helping you grow. Nothing worth having is easy. If you've enjoyed this video, hit that subscribe button so I can keep making more videos like this for you guys and I'll see y'all in the next one. Peace.